Is Mike on? Episode 104, What's Wrong with Orny Adams? My guest today is Pete Holmes. It's a good one. Find out why Pete lives in Ojai, why Pete is so generous with compliments to other comedians, and why Pete doesn't read comments on his videos. What's wrong with Pete Holmes? Stay tuned. Also, thank you to the listeners, and please check out my tour schedule. Come see one of my shows this Saturday, March 2nd. I'll be at the Ice House in Pasadena, California. Thursday, March 7th, I'll be back at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, California. Then it's off to Las Vegas again, Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, March 15th and 16th. Then Saturday, March 23rd and Sunday, March 24th, I'll be at Epic Cons with the rest of the Teen Wolf cast. Come check out the the shirts I made specifically just for this convention. And then Saturday, May 4th, I'll be part of the, although I don't feel like I'm part of it, the Netflix is a Joke Festival at the... uh, Kookaburra Lounge. It's a brand new comedy club, Kookaburra Lounge in Los Angeles, California. Thank you so much for listening. Enjoy this episode. Do you want to count me in? Three, two. I have a confession. (laughs) I, uh, I took a friend out for dinner last week who is going in for major surgery. And I paid... Usually we split, but I paid because I thought, what if he doesn't come out of the surgery and he dies? I don't want to have that on me. Yeah. That the last meal I had him split. But one of my greatest, greatest pleasures in life is to go out with a friend and not have to pick up because I'm so sick of dating. I'm so sick of paying for everything. You're married. We'll get into that with your hot air balloon proposal. Dumbest thing you could ever imagine. Uh, I'll introduce my guest in a second. Uh, Pete Holmes, I'm not introducing you yet. Settle down. Uh, (laughs) But I I just... You're married, Pete. You know what I realized? What are you doing? Am I in the show? No, you're not. not? No, no, no. Show's (laughs) not started yet. Still my show. I realized the other day, if you're waiting for a woman, like, because we're always waiting. Like, let's say... And your wife's out there fucking somebody else. Yeah. So we just, like... What time was this podcast supposed to begin? Two. Yeah. We started exactly at two. You know what? Can I tell you something I think you'll like? Yeah. The biggest guests on my show, always on time. I and agree. you know who's late? Small fries. I agree. Small fries are late. I agree. You know, I say this about David Spade. David Spade is at the improv early. Yeah. Never late. Yeah. Never runs the light. Yeah. Nice to everybody. Yeah. I go, that's a pro. Pro. That's a pro. And then you know who doesn't? Small fries. Right. I'm not even putting them down. No. But, uh, you know, it's hard to soar with the eagles when you're kicking around with the pigeons. Exactly. So what I realized is... That's a Joel Osteen quote. It is. Do you know that sometimes I feel like if I got a lot of Botox, I would look... Like me? Like Joel Osteen. <laughs> and like, I put pictures up side by side. I Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You're a very striking man. I think you're very handsome. Here's what I'm... You don't think Joel is? Joel's kind of goofy to me. Here's what I've come to realize. Joel looks like he's talented. And Getting he is. <laughs> in the car and starting it doesn't make the woman ready earlier. You'll, she'll, you'll, oh, yeah. I mean, I went through three gallons this weekend. Of gas? Yeah, just thinking. I, I know you're drink. electric, but I'm not. I know what you mean because you mentioned that on Friday we do the bonus episode of my podcast, which is me and my wife. Yeah. And I get in like my little setup mm-hmm. and I'm like, and Val knows this. I, I wouldn't call this a little setup. This is a major big time. No, you're a little dinkly. Kinda, no, this is a big Kind of bush league. This is sort of like, it's a little sad. Deal. This like is, this is what they find after the bodies have been discovered and they're like, oh. This is a 1963 did Shasta trailer. Shasta. Yeah. Did you get it because it's the perfect Orny Adams word to say? It, I have a Shasta. Yeah. I'm in, a sh- I'm in the back in a Shasta. Yeah, I only mention it every episode. And you know when you get dumb email from fans? Which I would say most of the email you guys send me, it's... Dumb? Well, well, I read a lot of it and I think, I can't believe we don't have more mass shootings and serial killers in this country. Because there's a lot of deranged people paying for my life right now. My hey? lifestyle. Yeah, because... Oh, they, they're fans. The fans. I love the fans, but somebody in, in the most recent email correspondence, she wrote me, because you can email me. I'm open to hearing from you at what's wrong at ornyadams.com. She said, what's the S stand for behind you? And that's Shasta. You got it. Pete Holmes is my guest. 
Everybody knows Pete Holmes yes. from his Netflix special. Oh, I was going to say my wife is always uh, later into the studio than I am. So I, I knew I'll you were going to say that. I know, yeah, yeah but yeah, not yeah. everybody is high processing as you are. Yeah, no, 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 I was like, I saw that. That's why I jumped in. Yeah, a mile away. Went into my bit, yeah. yeah I understand. Uh, Netflix special, I am not for everybody. Everyone. No, what? it is everybody. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Why not everyone? Like, what's Because the I say it on stage. It's a line from the act. Yeah, so we had to make it. You know the great Brian Regan story? He was going to call his special uh, Somebody Throw a Tarp Over Me. And then at the taping, he forgot to say it. Oh, that's great. So he's like, I can't call it that anymore. So it's just called Brian Regan Live. But did he forget the whole bit? No, he did the bit. Couldn't they have VO'd uh, in post? Yeah, I don't like, I'm not a fan of that. I like that he just went, it didn't happen. And so what did he name it? I walked on the moon? Brian Regan Live. This is his first Oh, his record. first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, if, if you haven't heard that, that's it's incredible. Incredible. The big yellow one is the sun. Yeah, he's the, the king. The um, he's the king of us all. Uh, the plurals, making things plural in uh, school. The dumb oh, kid. I before he, except after C. Yeah, all that stuff. You'll always be wrong, no matter what you say. Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> he's just I great. but can I just give yeah, you? Yeah, go ahead. Stuff? I'm not for everybody. You're not for everybody. I don't know the name of my own special. You have a podcast. You made it weird. Yes, I was going to make a joke that that was wrong. I, I call it. I've been on it once. What do you want to come back? Well, I mean, you're uh, welcome anytime. Let me tell I you love air, talking to you. Let me tell you the, the air date I was on October 22nd, 2014. But well, you could take that the other way. Things that have I was changed. So, yeah. That I was so eager to have you on. I had you on 10 years ago. I was one of the early adapters, as they call it. Yeah. Executive producer, writer, actor on Crashing on HBO, which you did with Judd Apatow. Yes. Which is, you know, it's a big, big deal. Big deal. And that was like the early days of Judd. Now he's a whore. I mean, he's, who isn't in a Judd Apatow production my, besides me? My, oh my God. <laughs> my, that reminds, my dad goes, how big of a deal is that, Peter? That's what he said. Oh, that's great. And I go, dad, it's like I'm playing in the Super Bowl and somehow I also won the World Series. That's, like, that's how I tried to explain yeah. it to him because it was so rare and so special and I was so grateful. Yeah. But he didn't understand. So I, I had to put it in sports terms. No, sometimes I call my parents with exciting news. Yeah, and it go, just what does that mean? Flat. And you have to tell them what it pays. Not not necessarily crashing, but if I'm doing like a special or something. Right. And I go, and they gave me this much money. He's like, ah. Oh, yeah. It's great. I mean, he grew up in the sepia toned mean streets of South Boston. I oh, get, did he really? He grew up in Somerville. My mom's from Southie, but yeah. And we grew up in the same town. We're going to get into that in a second. Don't tell uh, me what we're going to get. Holmes. Am I saying that right? Yeah. You're not saying peanut right, but you're saying that right. Holmes attended. Peanut. Wow, this it's is peanut. The fact that you're even making any money at all. Peanut. Gordon College. Yeah. In Wenham, Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am from Lexington, Massachusetts. You are too. And you I don't know where Wenham is, do you? Or Gordon College. Yeah, no. I mean, is that? Can I tell you a humiliating it's, story? It's the Fisherman College, right? That's where. That's Gordon College. Oh, it is. Don't trust it. <laughs> it's a shady degree. What is Gordon? Yeah, Gordon College. Here's a great story that'll tell you what Gordon College is. Uh, my college was playing, um, I think it was Boston College, maybe B BU. Mm -hmm. We were playing BU or something yeah. in a skirmish, yeah. probably. Yeah. <laughs> we were just like, go devour Gordon College for a practice. Yeah. And I wore, because I, I, it was my freshman year, and I was like, I'm going to buy a Gordon College sweatshirt because I saw other people having pride in their school. So I got this, I remember it, I wore it once. Green sweatshirt said just Gordon yeah. College, college style lettering. I'm on the campus and I see this guy, I'm looking for the field. And I asked these three Boston University students, you know, in the story, a real college. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, go, I was gonna, I was gonna say like, that, that's a safety school. So when you- Boston University? No, Gordon. Yeah, no, no, I know. So like, what's your safety school? So I'm school? wearing, oh, it was an early decision, I'm pretty sure, at Gordon <laughs> College. And I'm wearing the Gordon College thing and I go, hey guys, do you know where, uh, whatever, Bratwurst Field is? And the guy looks at me, he's these three riffraffs, just knucklehead, Boston yeah. knuckleheads. And he looks at me and he goes, Gordon College? <laughs> That's all he said. And I just walked away. I've never. And I threw that sweatshirt away. Yeah, I mean, it's. I was shameful. like, oh, I'm embarrassed of where I go. But to why college. even go to college if it's between Gordon and just. Not going? Yeah. Being Jack Kerouac? Just doing, saving that money. No wonder you're. Dad's still upset at you. No, I got a scholarship. I, I took care of half of that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Are you Gordon College uh, material? Most famous alumni? Not They won't acknowledge me because I say fucking poo poo and talk about ding dongs. And stuff. Really? So I don't get invited to anything. I'm not poo -poo, in so still point. Brow. Well, it's a Christian college. Oh. Yeah, it's a religious college. So this is the whole, you just unlock the whole thing. So I'm going, 
I'm in high school. I think I'm going to be a youth pastor. Uh, I'm like leading the Bible study at Lexington High School called mm -hmm. Mustard Seeds. I'm very in at church. Mm. Uh, and I, I was scared. Honestly, it was a fear-based choice, but mm. it ended up being the right choice for me. I heard all these stories. You go to college and everybody's partying and having sex. And I was like, that's not what I want to do. Mm. I'll go to... Loser. Hmm? Nothing. Sound like you said loser. No, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be right if I said that. I just... I clear my I'm throat. I guess. <clears throat> no, I know. But... Uh, it would have been nice if you did a <clears throat> loser. That would have been... You just said it. <laughs> So I made a fear-based, there it is, Take two. choice yeah. to go to a college where that wasn't happening. Like, yeah. And I say this actually as a good thing, Gordon College, when I went there, was like a summer camp. It was not academically rigorous, at least my major. Um, some kids- What might, was your major, not getting laid? Why, well, that wasn't an issue, my friend. Nobody was doing it. You'd get married if you so got laid. The rub on you is that you're Mormon, so you're not I'm Mormon. I'm not Mormon. So you're just, what, you're, the rub on me? Yeah, the rub. That's what people think I am? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I do have Mormon face. So what you do? Mor you have Mormon face. You have resting Mormon face. I have resting Mormon. That's very funny. You just punched up a bit. I've already, I'm already glad I came here. My Venmo is at Orny Adams. Yeah. Expect a deduction. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a negative. Somehow I drew from your account. But um, no, when I go to Utah, they love me because uh, I look like one of them. But anyway... I ended up going there, but what happened was really this gift in disguise. I, wa I went because I wanted to be a good boy. I wasn't done being a good boy. I wanted to be a youth pastor and all this stuff. And then I didn't expect this, but I never knew I was smart. Mm. Uh, I got a 1040 on my SATs. I wasn't like focused. Okay. I didn't know how to focus up. I didn't yep. know how to dedicate myself. Yep. So I wasn't like killing it academically. I think I had a B, B plus GPA, pretty good for LHS. Yeah. Anyway, so I got to college and I was like, oh, I'm smart. Like I realized I was smart. Yeah. Like I knew how to write an essay because of Mr. Brown at LHS. Did you have Mr. Brown? No, I didn't have, uh, no. Art of the film changed my life. He's a great, great professor. So anyway, I got there and because I wasn't being overly challenged academically and because I wasn't partying, I'm an addict. So I'm actually really glad I wasn't introduced to alcohol until I was like 22. Well, I didn't know this. And, you know, unofficially, but I, I can't handle it. Do you it. want to come out as an addict today? Do you? Yeah, well, I just diagnosed myself. You know who gets to diagnose me as an addict? Me. Yeah. Like eat shit. Some guy going to fucking you? analyze me. I'll tell you that I go to the kitchen and slam a Manhattan and go back to the party. I'm an addict. Okay. It's different. Is I it see, just alcohol or did yeah, you get just into alcohol. the good stuff? Just alcohol. Wow. Yeah. I, I st I'm California sober. Okay. Okay. I get you. For the, my listeners, uh, California sober means you will smoke pot, but Occasionally. not drink. I don't drink, but it, mostly I do hallucinogens. We'll get to that later. Yeah, the, the uh, mushrooms. Uh, you know, that's kind of bush league. It's a little bit like wow. Your let's here. talk. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I, 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 I've done. I'd love to talk about psychedelics. What, but, but let's talk more about religion because I, you've the first. There's thing, a punchline to this story. You, the first thing you called me was I have a to Jew. Hit the punchline. Yeah. Because I love comics yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I yeah. just made a Jewish joke with my friends the other night and I like had to apologize for mm. it. And I was like, oh, not right. I thought you fucks were cool. Yeah. <laughs> not, not just like, I love comics more than anything. I love comedy pirates. Yeah. And when I see you and I say, look at you, you crispy Jew, is what I said to you as I, because you were getting rained call on. back to the Holocaust and. No. Uh, yeah. No, it Sang was because it? you're dry and it's yeah, you're getting rained on. Yeah. I was going more a nebbishy, dry guy. Yeah, get out of it. Don't get me in trouble. No, I would never get you in trouble. And I, 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 I love... I'll, I'll tell you, I don't care because I love when people joke like that. Of course. Um, and to me, it's it's funny. It's the great, it's the great green light of having comedian friends. So yeah. I did make, a, admittedly, a joke I wouldn't make to anybody else, but I made it to you. Well, yeah. It's it's like us sniffing each other's butts as dogs. Yeah, it's just funny. I don't Are you have any problem call me with a it. gangly Lithuanian it would or whatever. Be, it'd be even funnier if I wasn't Jewish. Why why'd you say Lithuanian? Because I am Lithuanian. Do you know my story? I, I don't want to hear your story. Let me finish the punchline. Let me tell story. my story. Okay. Because the school wasn't academically rigorous and I wasn't drinking, I wasn't having drugs, drugs or sex. I focused really hard on comedy. The end. That's all I wanted to say. Yeah. It ended up being the best thing for me because I was bored and it turns out I am smart. But, so I ended up doing stand-up and improv and mm, writing and all of the stuff, yeah. writing plays and stuff. It was incredibly wonderful. So Malcolm Gladwell actually talks about this phenomenon in his book, David versus Goliath or David and Goliath, uh, where it's like, go to a school that's not too hard for you. Go to a school mm. that is yeah. manageable for you. Oh, Yo, you did it. Because I fucking Gordon thrived and figured out what I actually wanted to yeah. do. So much better than like 
trying to get an A at Harvard in a class that everyone else is getting an A, eat shit, I'll be at the comedy studio. I think that's off. But, but religion forced you into marriage at age 22. Yeah. You can tell me your Lithuanian thing now. It was, Are you Lithuanian? It was Jesus who, who made you propose at the age of 22. I didn't propose to my first wife. You didn't. You just knocked her up. I mean, that's... It's no. not an option. No, I was in the parking lot of Caldor in, oh, in Woburn. Or is that Woburn? Yes, Burlington. 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 Do you yeah. know what it is now? No, I hope a coat factory. No, it is a... Um, Caldor's is now uh, Nordstrom Rack. Okay. And like a Demoulas. But Caldor was... The fucking, greatest. The greatest. The greatest. It was before... It was Amazon before Amazon. Yeah, it was a real Anything life... It was a three-dimensional needed. Amazon. Anything you need. It wasn't too nice... It was kind of like a world market a little bit, but like with a grocery section. They had everything. It did. But everything. you could say like- do you, Going to Caldor. Yeah. Do you have a fishing rod? They'll, yeah. We'll, they'll check in the back. They would have a fishing rod. It's a great rod. alibi. I was on my way to Caldor. For what? A single match. Yeah. You know what I mean? I needed something. Do you know I tried to find a vintage Caldor t-shirt it's online? Idea. It's Because I think idea. they had like a, a rainbow, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that sounds right. Before the rainbow meant something else. Like it was, you can say before the gays took our rainbow. You can say that. That's in, that's in your voice. I, you know what I figured that's out? That's your today. voice. But I wouldn't. I'd yell. I could it. see you on say before the gays took our rainbow. Well, I would say it on stage. I love the gays, but I miss the rainbow. <laughs> like that's you. It's <laughs> so easy to write a bit for you. You just it's be in a rage. Ball. It's so easy. It's t ball my comedy. Let's not forget this. I'm listening to your special on the ride over. Has anyone ever killed that hard? I'm I'm like kind of aghast. Huh. I'm like, it's it's phenomenal. You have like, set, not just applause breaks, but funny. They're laughing so hard they applaud. Seven, eight in a row? And you're incorporating the audience? And I look, I don't want to butter your bread. And what am I? Yes, I do want to butter your bread. It reminded me of Carlin. Like you hit him with something right up. Starts right away. There's no how you doing. I was really blown away. And I'm not surprised it has 5 million views. But I also was... There is a part of me that's like, I, I not, mm, why aren't more people talking about it is what I'll say. Because it's fucking phenomenal. Well, you, You've really figured you out the me, art form. You tell me. Because, I, you know, I offered uh, to sell that to Netflix for a dollar. No, I know you told me that. That's where they didn't take that? No. No. Did you, having a special on Netflix, is it as big of a dream as I imagine it? You've had... More than one? I'll say this, Orny. Yeah. Everything you think is gonna fix you will not. Yeah. You specifically. No, you. <laughs> you know? Is that? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I missed my rainbow. <laughs> it's not gonna work, Orny. Do you think that LGBT I have trouble remembering plus L no, LGBTQ plus. Okay. How excited, by the way, was Boston when queer became the word you're supposed to say? Yeah. yeah. Don't steal that. That's mine. You can have a don't steal this. No, what no. don't you think it'd be easier for people like me who aren't that intelligent if it was G B L T ah, Q plus? That's just making people hungry though uh, for a good better hungry for equality. What's that crunch? Acceptance. Acceptance. <laughs> so here's my Lithuanian story. Mm. So I was at the Irvine Improv, sold out, big room, big room, all the way to the back. And I'm on stage and I, I do a joke. We're both from Lexington, Massachusetts, hence the, the, the mug I have in honor of our town. And we're going to start the podcast in a minute. Don't worry. Uh, and a guy in the front row was making fun of the way that I say uh, pillow, you know, like you sleep on. I yeah, say yeah, it, yeah, yeah, pillow. I say it fun. Do you say, you say it? You say it wrong. You don't say it funny. And you say peanut wrong too. Well, I didn't know we were attacking. Yeah, yeah. No, no, we're at the host. We need to. This is more like you, a you, loving intervention. You said pillow. I'm going to talk so much about your Do you special. write a pillow time? It was maybe 42 seconds on my special and right onto my Lithuanian story. I feel a little slighted, but uh, it's not slighted. Okay. This is loving. This is me saying you have blueberries in your teeth uh, do i, I peanut i say peanut wrong peanut and idea i d e a yeah but these things can be stopped i said channel instead of channel until i was like 25 and then i stopped maybe i have a learning disability and you're making me oh. feel uncomfortable and i'm canceling what you. would the comedian orny adams say because that? that's like the least Get you over it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have a learning disability you're dumb you're lazy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no Who says so okay I lithuanian say, so i say hello funny and peanut. And everybody, every show makes fun of the way I say pillow. Pillow. And uh, can you say pillow? 
Do you know that I sell pillowcases after the show? This that's, is where my career is at. Let's say pillow. Let's say uh, pillow. Yeah, it's, it says the punchline of the joke with pillow on it. Uh huh. Thirty five dollars each. Thirty five. Thirty five. And you moving them? Oh. What do you think bought this house? Wow. I'd like to think somebody's doing a robbery in one of those. I like would love of. that. <laughs> I'd love Big that. Big fan. Yeah. Uh, or trick or treating. So a guy in the front row corrects me. Pillow. The way I say it. Yeah. I go, uh, you, it seems like you have an accent. He said, said, with an accent, said, I'm from Lithuania. So I, I said, well, now people from Lithuania are coming over here and correcting us. Yeah. This is how bad America's gotten. Right? So... I didn't know how, you ever like get into something with somebody and not know how to get out of it? Meaning there's no, there's nothing funny about Lithuania. There's not like any common knowledge about Lithuania. Like, what can I say about, like if it was about Florida, I'd know what to say. Yeah. If it was about Canada, I'd have a save line. I had no save line. And I sat down in my chair and I looked at him. This is this came to me like this. And I said, uh, what is uh, what is Lithuania known for? Besides the batteries. That's very good. And the place, right? I put it online. Lithuania, wherever this country is, furious. Fur I mean, hate. Really? You can read the comments. It's been seen like... Well, we did beat Russia in the basketball Olympics. I know that one. Okay, but that's... You know what I'm saying? Like We have the best basketball players, and Russia used to farm them out and win with Lithuanians' players, and then we swapped it. See, this is what I mean. Like, the, you Lithuanians don't have any sense of humor. No, you no, just... No, I, right I, into the stats. Like, I, you can't laugh. I actually... I, didn't I say I love it? I know. I was in Florida last week. They can laugh at themselves. So anyway, I put the clip up online, and vitriol. Like, 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 don't come to this country. We'll be waiting for you. That type of stuff. And then my phone rings, and it's my mom. I don't know. What does she have to say about it? Here, here we go. And she said, you know, your great-grandparents are from Lithuania. Okay. So we're very, you and I. Very bonded. Hateful people. We're mm -hmm. just, we've got to stop the Lithuanian hate. I'm a, lot, I'm a lot Lithuanian in here. I forgive you. Yeah. In the name of comedy. Thank you. The country. Lithuania. So then I put up that clip saying that I'm Lithuanian and that we need to all get along with each other. And now they're, they're mad at me for claiming that I'm Lithuanian. They're like, you're not Lithuanian. There's so, a bigger issue here. Why are you reading comments? Oh, I love comments. Yeah, I can tell. What's going on, buddy? I don't have a kid. <laughs> I don't have a kid. I have but a time. Do you have uh, self-respect or boundaries with your... Well, I would say most comments are, are really supportive and nice. And do those feel good or do you just breeze right by? Well, the thing is, if you give any weight to those comments, you have to give weight to the negative comments. I don't think that's true. I think you're okay. going to naturally and instinctually harbor the negative ones. It's called Vel Velcro Teflon, and it's a neurological phenomenon. Mm. And if I tell you, which I already did, mm -hmm. you didn't even give a shit, mm -mm. that your specials like Carlin, who, who's ever killed that way, if you no, don't I do sit with that. that eh. Wait a minute. That, that's eh. a comment. I wish you'd put that comment under my video. I can't. My web presence can't really afford that endorsement. Do you think I should have been on Crash? You don't want to hear about Velcro Teflon? I'd rather hear more about my special and why I wasn't on Crashing. I didn't think you were needed. <laughs> like, who's like, let's bring this guy in. Did Judd, true or false, we would here, I have a better Judd burn. shot it down. We would have had you on, yeah. but it would have required uh, like a three-minute explanation video of who you are. That's great. That would have been funny. Like that it would have to funny. cut to like B-roll and be like, in the next scene, don't be alarmed that there's someone you're unfamiliar with. <laughs> oh, this is like the, the, like the suicide announcement it. at the end. That the, if you know anybody suffering from depression. <laughs> um, that's interesting. Do you really care? You don't really care that you weren't on Crashing? No, I don't. But I, now I'll be you're honest. Weird with, Arnold Palmer of intense confidence and then also crippling self-doubt. Is that correct? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. But here's the thing. And I, I got to be honest, I didn't hear anything you said, but I'm just agreeing because rhythmically it felt right. Yeah, it felt good. I said it with confidence. I sipped at the end of it. I loved it. I loved it. It won't make it into the episode. But uh, You edit these? No. No. It doesn't feel like it. But I was on Barry Katz's. Hey, Barry. Like a, That's two you. weeks ago. Hey, Barry. I went at him pretty hard. For what? Shitting on you and comedian? For being Barry. Just and, being Barry. You yeah. know what Barry Katz? Oh no, go ahead. I, I and I thought he's not gonna. He he was asking me about my reputation. I said, "What do you think your reputation is?" You know, Barry. I went. I went. You know, 
it was pretty, you know, I like Barry. I get a kick out of him, but he, I, he's, you know, be interesting to see if he edits anything out. Oh, uh, I that's see. what I'm, that's what I was going out with that. Um, yeah, I, let's get back to my special. Let's get back to me not being on crashing. Let's, uh, no, here's what happened. Special is so funny. Inspiring. When you hear something that funny, you're like, wow, really? But do you mean that, do, am I now going to see clips of you on everybody's podcast glowing? You've already come up on my podcast. No, no, no I'm saying like. like how, no, I don't mean on my podcast. Since I called oh. you that day and told you how great you are when I saw you at the improv, that's come up two or three times on my podcast. And somebody. See, nothing. Was it Dave Rath? No, thank you. Teflon. No, no, Dave Rath came up Watch to this. me. Watch this. You suck. Sticks right to you, doesn't it? No, is Dave Rath your rep? Yeah. So he, he came up to me and said, your name came up. Pete brought your name up. And I told my team, I was like, what do we do? Orny needs to have a Netflix special. Is there any way we can get that to all things comedy? Yeah, what you happened? think I just say shit? Just. You think I just say shit? I love it. Well, what am I doing right now? What do you think? I just say shit? I think you're phenomenal. I think you're so great. When I watch you, sometimes I'll do a bit and I'll try to just borrow a little of your heart. Hmm. You know? I love that. I have this joke about how we came from fish. We evolved from fish, but we eat them. Like, what kind of a thank you is that to our ancestors? Is that my bit? Sounds like it could be a bit of yours. Yeah. So when I do it, I try to, I go, oh. remember Orny's fearlessness. Well, can I give you a tag for that that I thought of? Uh... Oh, you saw me do it. Did you do Is that yeah, fish you bit saw yours? Me do it. Yeah. Okay, this have this, you been have you been doing it? How's it no, going? No, no, no. I've never no, because I thought How's it working. Sometimes I can't remember bits I've done, but can I, I give you an worried. observation I had this week? I was at a uh doing a private show at this Tarania resort, is which that? is Palace Verdes. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Over twenty? <laughs> That's my airfare. So uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you off the air. I'll make you vomit. So um I took a helicopter. So we're at this resort. Over 200? The Tarania Resort, right? And they have a really fine dining restaurant. And everybody's eating. You know what? Maybe this is too much like my straw bit now that I think about it. Everybody was eating fish overlooking the sea. And I thought, you never eat beef. In a field. Overlooking a cow field. Yeah. yeah no, I, I get... think there's something a little cruel about that. Yeah, yeah. And for some reason, you can eat fish and nobody gets You want to eat fish by where they died. Yeah. But nobody gets angry at people for eating fish. They're like, oh, you eat meat? You eat pork? But everyone's like, for some reason, eating fish. Because they're different from us. I've, I've given this a lot of thought. You know, you can get down on all fours and look like a cow. Four arms, you know, four limbs. Yeah, yeah. Fish just looks like an eyelid. It's hard to care about the plight so of a fish. They deserve to be eaten. Also, we have all, I used to have a bit about this. I was like, we evolved. We grew legs. We got out of there. You dumb fucks. Yeah. You get what you deserve. Yeah. Evolve. Yeah. Get the fuck out of there. That's yeah. the, you, you don't like these nets? Grow I, some legs. I, I did. used to do a bit. You couldn't do it now where I said, uh, we, we, uh, we evolved. We, uh, the, the cow stayed down. The cow stayed. I did this exact same bit. I said, we stood up and you would too if the guy behind you was Homo erectus. Now mm -hmm. you can't do that bit anymore. So oh, Homo evolved. erectus. I yeah. See. Yeah. So I had a. F what? You just did that. You don't even know. You've been single too long. You need to live with a woman. Okay. And then and then what? And I don't get away with shit? No, then you'll know that you go, so... <laughs> like, you didn't even know. No. And you're like two decades away from being a real weird guy. No, this is when I... I'm, I'm already there. This is where I really grew to respect you. I already, I, I respected you, but... Uh, you had the the... You followed me at the improv. Yeah. A couple of months ago. Yeah. And I had to run off and do another spot. I, 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 first of all, I couldn't believe you were at the improv. I never see you there. I've been there a lot lately. It's great. I love it. It's great. It's great. And I'm there in the store. The next day, my phone rings. It's you. Or a text. Yeah, I called you. Or I think I called you. Yeah, it led to phone calls. And we ended up having these really long conversations, mostly uh, when you needed someone to talk to because you were driving home, which was a long see, commute. Can I tell you something? Yeah. That it doesn't it doesn't really bug me. You're smiling, but I call my friends yeah. and I do live I live in Ojai, so it's ninety minutes outside of the city. Yeah. yeah, and I call them when I'm on my way home, and I just don't like that they they downgrade the phone call because I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm like you realize, I have a lot of books I could listen to. I could call somebody else. I'm just like, don't you? What it is is don't cock block my love. I'm loving you. Why can't you love us when you're not driving? 
Why does it mean more if I called you from my apartment? Because then you're not then my stuck. then my daughter's there, my wife's there. Yeah, I'm I'd like, like I to gotta hear go. that. I'd like to hear the I crying, could, okay. the, the, and the crying of the baby. <laughs> you're very good. You're very good. But I anyway that that's just a personal uh, little thing. I I always say to I call Berbiglia every other day, and he's oh, always like, pick up this name you just dropped. If that's a name drop, uh, Jesus that, that, Christ. That's a big name Mike, in comedy. Mike Birbiglia is the linoleum in my kitchen. I drop him so much. <laughs> he's, he's paved my whole house. Uh, no, I talk to him all the time and he always goes, are you driving home? And I'm like, why does that, why can't I, can't I just be thinking about you? Yeah. Like I'm so lonely yeah. on the ride I need to. I'm totally fine driving home. We now track you driving like people do Taylor Taking Swift's the private jet. So we know. Uh, it's funny, I, here's a name drop. I helped Sarah, Sarah Silverman get the wording on this joke right she goes i wish there was an app that told you when your friends were pooping and she goes there is words with friends it's like when they did yeah, their yeah, move yeah, 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 yeah. um but that's her joke I, I think i just moved the order or something which was a great thrill for me that mm -hmm. she, whenever a great comic you like listens to you like you mm -hmm. but anyway uh yeah so i called you and can I, I actually liked where you were taking this is one of the great discoveries of my life i'm 44 is figuring out that uh, giving is receiving. Mm. And I want, I know this is getting a little, it's like shifting the tone. But no, like, I love this. I love calling people now and and just telling them something great and telling them how amazed I was at your set and how incredible I think you are. And I guess people, you know, understandably, you know, it's a weird world. Am I after something? Is there an ask coming? But you do it enough, people get to know. You know when people, you see their name on your phone and you're like, ugh. You kind of have mixed feelings about yeah. it. I just want to be a person that you call, you just tell them. Like if I have a memory of somebody I came up in comedy with, somebody that was kind to me or helped me or we started off something together, nothing, it's such, it's like a cof, cup of coffee for your heart. It's to just call them and tell them. It's I a agree. great gift. I, I call people all the time, whether it's um, Joe Coy after he hosted that award show. Yeah. I text, you know, yeah. thinking of you, hope you're yeah. cool. Let's grab lunch sometime. Yeah. Everybody. In fact, there was uh, during COVID, I reached out to a lot of people that I thought might be struggling yeah. mentally. Totally. And, and I enjoy more than, in fact, who was it the other day? Oh, who was struggling? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I went on uh, after a comic that, um, I won't say the name, but it's like a, a decent sized comic that, you know, like sometimes during this 30 years, I've just, I never, you know, bumped into this person or worked with this person. And I went out of my way at the Laugh Factory to find that person before they, even though it was going on, and just go, that was great. Yeah. That was really, and I saw everything melt away. And he's like, you're, you're great too. I really, I like, and, but he would yeah. never have gone up to me. So I, I like to initiate. Yep. And it's one of the, the biggest mistakes I ever made when I was doing comedy early on was this arrogance that, you know, I could just go in and do my set yeah. and leave. Yeah. And I never, like to me, you're real. You're a real insider. You're a comedy insider. You're friends with these guys. I see who's on your podcast. Those guys, I, I'm not. I'm not friends with. I never ingratiated myself. Mm -hmm. And I tell young people, really, that's a regret that I have, and something that, and not to be fake about it, but I just, I never watched mm -hmm. because I, I didn't want to be influenced by people. And to me, I wanted to be alone with my th thoughts and my notes after my shows, yeah. and I went home. So, um. Yeah, it's it's. I think that's really cool that you've evolved into this guy, and I'm it's somebody that's been on the receiving end of that. I really appreciate. Yeah. It. And now you know the other thing is it's now you have Pete Holmes Insurance. So anytime your name comes up, I'm like, oh no, no, that guy's that guy's amazing. You know, you well, you know, if you want, see, it's a heart thing. I call you because it heals and feeds my heart. Then if you want to bring the head in, which is fine, give him his due. He'd be like, and then when you come up, Orny will have a good word or you know, they're thinking of a project. There is a logic to it. Right. But that's not, I'm saying this sincerely. That's not why I do it. Because I'll give you another example. I noticed that whenever my dad texted me, it would, it would kind of, it kind of, I'd be like, ah, what is this? Right. And the solution to that was instead of letting things atrophy and get to the point where my dad would text me something that would bother me, which was usually like, call your mother. Mm -hmm. I just, I just didn't like that. Cause that's, that, that was the model of my childhood was like handle your mother. <laughs> so I would get Are they still married. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a joke. Jesus. Yeah. 
kept them together. <laughs> so now another, so gi I, giving is receiving. Now I stay upstream of that and I'll text my dad just a kindness. And I know how to talk to my dad. I just texted him. I'm very proud of this. He texted me. We're at this Chinese restaurant in, uh, I think it's in Watertown. And, uh, and, I w and I just wrote back, how lucky am I that I had a dad and a mom that took me to interesting places. We didn't go to Panda Express. You took me, it's actually in Newton. Took me to this like hole in the wall. Expensive. I don't know if it was in Newton. Okay. I think it's Watertown. It doesn't matter. But they took me to this very authentic Chinese restaurant. Right. I was like, you exposed me to such great things. And just fucking let it rip. That's great. Let it rip. So you get a weird, uh, strained relationship with your parents. Well, I have a strange relationship with everybody if I don't have a, a why, if I don't have a result, if I don't have an intention in mind. Hmm. And when I get curious about that result and that intention, instead of being like guarded with my folks, I go like, no, if I'm being honest... I would like to have a healthy, loving, positive relationship with everybody I know. Okay, so what can we do to make that happen? One of them is instead of waiting for my dad to text me, call your mother, and me getting mad, uh, and you know he doesn't even know that. I'll just text him like, "You took me to a great restaurant. What did he do? He did a lot of great things. Mm -hmm. My father taught me confidence. He taught me gregarity, if that's even a word. Just he's very gregarious, outgoing. He's like the mayor of Somerville. He's going around in the bakery in Lindell, shaking hands. He taught me that. Yeah, it's a huge skill in my life, not just my professional life. Just taught me how to live life. And instead of just kind of, first of all, you have to take make the effort to remember that. It's so much easier. This is Velcro Teflon again. Velcro is the effortlessness with which we hold on to resentment. Teflon is those good things. What were they doing that was good? Then you text that to him. Now, when my dad texts me, there's been a couple weeks now, I can't wait to read it because mm. he's going to say something like some other nice memory that he had. This guy taught me how to ride a bike. What am I doing? Yeah, I'm not saying there isn't a time for unpacking and, and setting boundaries and all of that's good work. But like I'm at a place in my life, giving is receiving. Orny, you murdered the improv. I'm going to reach out with no agenda. And just be like, that was inspiring. Because I'm also at a place having done comedy for over 20 years now to be like, when I watch someone who does it and is really doing it, you're just so present and so engaged. I had one at the improv recently. I was so proud of myself. Everybody was going up and just kind of doing okay. Mm. And I went up and you know, the difference, it wasn't the jokes, Orny. It wasn't the jokes. Everybody had good jokes. I went up and fucking folded them into me, like mm. butter yeah. into dough. Yep. And I merged with them and I made them I'm very proud of myself, but I'm also letting this out. A date isn't about the transcript of the date. It's your vulnerability. It's like, and your authority. It's both. It's like, can I be vulnerable enough to actually let the present moment have an impact on me? Can I be that raw? When I'm being real with the audience, I'm showing my neck. You know what I mean? They could kill me. And that's a thrill. And then we establish trust. It is this mini relationship. I murdered. I brought that's the crowd right. to a level that they hadn't been to and it was towards the end of the show mm -hmm. it was like people were thinking about leaving and i went up and it was, and that's what i see you doing it's like on your special when there's the woman laughing and it's that and you incorporate it and you say now i've lost my place i'm like that's comedy it's not the transcript it's not the jokes. It's what's the sharing of your presence. It's what I never liked about doing the Tonight Show or Letterman. Was, I agree. It's it's get boom 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 boom. Don't miss anything. Nope. Get to it's all it's all about getting there. What it's is this? A, a PowerPoint presentation? Yeah, it is, and it's it's there's no so you'll love this. When I was at Montreal the last time I was there a couple of years ago, uh, they Bonjour, kept in Montreal. Yeah, I'm going to make a lot of comedian references. Yeah, yeah, I was at... Uh, a seven o'clock show? It was a seven o'clock show because I do the gala. I do this <laughs> this 3,000 seat gala. Oh, you I do know the gala, yeah. At uh, Plesta Arts, whatever that is. Pl yeah. It's a beautiful theater. I did, uh, one year, I did uh, Steve Martin's gala. Oh, wow. Ask Whitney Cummings. She has a great story about it. And What, what, what does that mean? It's a great story. Okay, but that sounds like no, no, it's just or something. It's, it's like... me saying, uh, Whitney, maybe you can tell the story publicly. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You're nudging her. Yeah, nudging her. No, I think she, I think she has. But you'll like this. So they kept my philosophy was if I'm a stand up comedian, if I'm that great as I tell myself, then what is this? I have to give you a five minute A B C D E F tonight show. Like, why can't you just trust me yeah. that I can walk out for five minutes 
and be funny. Yeah. So I said to myself, and I also wanted to know, like I, I had just done Conan. I was pretty sure they were going to ask me to do it again. And they didn't. But I said, I want to be prepared if they call me the day of and say, can you be here in an hour and do a set? And my answer should just be yes. Don't hesitate. Just say yes, then figure it out. So I challenged myself and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't tell my agents. I didn't tell uh, Montreal, but they kept calling me saying, where's Orny set? Yeah. And my agent said, we're not, he doesn't give the set ahead of time. We need to know what topics they said. Uh, to pre prevent overlap with the other comics. Got news for you. I'll watch the show. If there's overlap, I'll, I'll, I'll go this way. I do it every night. I'm on stage with yeah. other people. Now I'm I on can, my phone. Now I'm not compromising. Yeah, I can zig. I'm, I'm talking to a shoe. I can, I can zig. I can zig. Yeah, exactly. These are all comedians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, so then I said to my agent, who I'm not with anymore, but I was, um, but a good friend officiated his wedding. I said they want me to show up at eight in the morning now with my outfit. They want me to hold up my outfit so they. I don't know what. I, I, all I know is when you do the Tonight Show, you just show up with an outfit and somehow they you walk out and do the show. Yeah. And they want, they want me to do a sound check. I'm not worried about, I'm loud. If you can't capture me, we got a problem. So I said to him, I'm not going to that. They're going to call you and just say, you know Orny, can't find him. I don't know where he is. And in and, and not in a, he's a substance abuse guy, but he's a guy that is just sort of. That's where you went. Yeah. Well, not, in, not in that way. Well, you know. So anyway, I. I do I, love all of this. The truth is, I didn't have a set. And I challenged myself. Oh, to just go out and riff? And to just riff. And so what I did was I locked myself in the hotel room the day of the gala, shut all the curtains, put um, blocked all the light. Then on the wall, I started taping every bit that I knew worked, that I knew I could go to if I had to go to, just to remind me. And then I put on Buddy Guy, Sweet Home Chicago, and I played it over and over on a loop and just looking and going like this and figuring out the math and where I could go. And I said, don't have an opening joke. Walk out there and have the courage to just say the first thing that comes to you and then go from there. And if there's somebody in the audience doing something that causes a reaction in your brain, go there because that will read real. So when I do that joke where I say, what is, what is Lithuania known for besides lithium batteries? It works because everybody could tell viscerally it had just come to me. And so I walked out there and, uh, and I didn't tell anybody. I didn't even tell my agent what I was doing. I only told one person, my dad. I said, this is the plan. He said, you know, he said, how are you going to feel if it doesn't go well? I said, I'm going to feel horrible, but I have to know if I can do it. And I went out and I got- This is when we widen out and re reveal you're talking to a fern. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your dad. I got to try, dad. <laughs> it's just a plan. He, um, I went over there. And so I went to get coffee. Uh, and I was going to go back and shower and shave. And I ran at the Starbucks across the street from the hotel. And I ran into my agent and he said, you look like death. He went and shaved your eyes. Were all, he goes, and he said, it was the first time I ever thought we're in trouble here. And I shaved, put my outfit on, walked over there, walked out, got a standing ovation. Mm. It was thunder. And I do love this story. I have been, uh, infused with confidence ever since then because I know I have the goods to just be funny if I have to be funny on call and I don't have to play by these rules and Montreal doesn't know I, I did that and nobody else knows I did that and Colleen McGrew, what is her name McGraw uh she's the one who was supposed to check my set I apologize I blew you off but that's what was going on yeah and yeah, yeah, yeah. and you could you could tell me I'm telling you, you could tell me I'm hosting the Oscars tomorrow night and I'd, I'd be fine. Yeah, I love that. Well, I mean, you touched on so much that is just written on my heart as well. Uh, you know, there's doing comedy and then there's being funny. And it's our job to be funny. And there's nothing funny about a PowerPoint presentation. There's nothing funny about running your, your outfit at eight in the morning. 
and you just want to be in a zone. Maybe this will light you up more because you look bored. Um, <coughs> look, well, it usually happens when nothing. I stop talking. Yeah, I know. I We're similar in that way. Yeah. George Burns said, you know, I smoke a cigar because comedy is a cigar. It's imposing. It's mm. confident. Takes over the room. It's mouth cancer. It's also mouth cancer. Yeah. But you know what I mean? If I lit a cigar in here, I'd be taking over the it's space. Yeah. And that's our job. And that's what you did that day. And like one of the tricky things about this business is you take these kinetic, wild, interesting you know, it's 1030 at the cellar and you're going up and you figure it out and you fuck some magic happens. And then, you know, the business of it or the presentation of it or the packaging of it at a festival or whatever it might be can dry it up. I, my computer arts teacher, graphics teacher. Gordon College. No, no, in high school, Mr. G. He, uh, he, he said something I, I always remember. He goes, you know, you find a beautiful rock in the ocean. It's the most beautiful iridescent blue and brown and it's amazing so you're like i'm gonna go show it to my friends and they're back on the blanket and you walk it back to them and by the time you get there it's dried up and now it just looks like a brown rock you look mm. insane so that's so much of our job and one of the things that i think we recognize in each other is i want the stone to stay wet mm. and then when i did my talk show for example I, one of the gratitude calls i gave recently or appreciation calls was to my producer director orin brimmer and I was like, man, we were so young. We didn't know what we were doing. And I'm just so grateful that you you carried so much the load. You looked at so many of the edits and you were really a fucking workhorse for that show. You gave your life, dark eyes under your... And I was leaving, you know, around five o'clock because we knew that my job, because Conan told me this, there's a name drop. Get Berbigli out of there. Jeez. Conan's coming down. For what? <laughs> Conan said, it's your job to be in a good mood. He goes, that's your job. He goes, the writers build a playground and you play on it. And that's how I feel about my standup. Yeah. The writing part of me builds a playground, but it's my job when I go on stage to play on it. Yeah. And, and then that means taking care of myself psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, all of the different ways, because it's not about the words. I, I, I often say that before I go on stage. I go, it's not about the words. Right. The bad sets are when I go, how do I open? And then the cigar comes out and you go, fuck you. That's how you open. Yeah. Whatever you happen, whatever you do is the show. If it doesn't go well and now I'm uncomfortable, share it. Be honest. I thought that was going to go better. Now this guy's looking at me, whatever, whatever it is. It well, treat it like a conversation. <clears throat> you know, yeah. if, if the conversation is dying, you don't just let it die. You yeah. sort of call it know. out. That's the difference between us and a band. A yeah. band can't stop a song and be like, wow, you guys aren't feeling it. We can in real time. I've but seen like, Bob Dylan do that. Oh, I'm stop a song. I'm gonna stop. I, the last time I saw Conan O'Brien, Conan O'Brien, not the Barbarian. No, Conan O'Brien. Oh, okay. I said to him, I said, Conan, I said, I'm gonna be honest. O'Brien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Conan O'Brien. Uh, <laughs> I said, this has always baffled me. I, I said, you went to Harvard. You had to work hard. You could have gone to Gordon College in Wenham, Massachusetts, and not have worked so hard. And been the, the top of the heap. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look, who played it better? It's like, who wore it better? Yeah. Uh, no, I really think I might be in the running for, for the best life. If not the best life, but one of really? the best lives ever. Yeah. Really? And that, and that includes going to a college where I wasn't stressed. I, I loved did. my college. Me too. Yeah, it's the greatest. It's the last time I was normal on the same schedule as everybody else. Yeah, you're all and synced up. carefree. And yeah, it's I... Been, it's I wasn't better. super stressed. And then I look back on the synchronicities. Dan Buck, who started the improv team, I was just in the in one of the buildings and he happened to be hanging up the flyer for the audition for the for Sweaty Tooth Mad Men. And I was like, what's that? Like, we're starting an improv team. Okay. Just like kind of cool. Okay. I'll you're gr you're great at improv. Like, that's right. <laughs> so I got to be, you should listen to most of my podcasts. There isn't this much sort of- Sizzle? Yeah. Back and Riz? forth. I, this is Pete Holmes. No, you, we have similar minds. Was um, uh, was there a lot of improvising on crashing? Oh yeah, thank you for asking because I can't wait to tell people whatever line you love in a Batman video or on crashing. I promise you, I improvised it. <laughs> and maybe you know we used to have the Pete version of the script, which was like sixty pages. Then we had the shooting. If you give the Pete version of the script to the uh, whatever they're called line producer. They'd panic. Yeah. Because they're they're looking at the clock, they're looking at the money. 
when they don't want to shoot an eight page scene. Right. But I would look at the eight page scene before. So I'd have all these things, all the, every area, anywhere that it could go. So like you with Sweet Home Chicago playing, yeah. I'm loading it all in. Right. So I'm improvising, but I'm also cheating with as many lines. But there were so many things. The one that always comes to mind, I don't even know if, that, if it's that funny, but I'm with Bill Burr and he's a sports guy and I'm not a sports guy and I'm trying to be a sports guy. And he's like, and I'm just trying to say something sporty. And I'm like, ah, yeah, nobody better than Michael Jordan. He's like Babe Ruth, but black and lean and jumpy. And I, I just like, that was yeah one of the hot jokes in that scene. And I was like, and that wasn't written down anywhere. And I was just so proud. Yeah. But that's, that's Judd's approach. And a lot of times to give a little insight into Judd's process, you know what Judd would do is I would write it like the second season, first episode, my character's coming back from the road and there's my ex-girlfriend. And it's this brutal, as so many other episodes are, it's this brutal, like Book of Job style, nothing's going my way, everything sucks, I bomb, then I go out in front of the cellar and there she is, there's Jamie Lee playing um, Allie. And it's supposed to be this beautiful, at least Allie was there and she says something nice to me. Yeah. And Jed would be like, oh, she says you suck. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, that that's what he, he's great. Yeah. He's like, you got to surprise him. Right. Like they think it's going to be like seventh heaven. Oh, his girlfriend was there. And that's, we, we could have done that. It could have been right. good, but he was always like, let's do it again. The scene is written sweet. He's like, do it as a fight. Do the whole thing as a fight. Huh. See, that's fun. That's a fun way to work. It was. It was. I like that. It you was know, very I, alive. Yeah, I was on Teen Wolf. It was very scripted, very sort of into the point where, you know, I would go off script, but the other actors would get upset. Yeah. Then there's continuity issues because we got to turn it around. And yeah. then they're calling the producers. And he just said, This, is this okay? But every improv improvisation I did is the yeah. highlight. Yeah, I mean, is the sure. highlight. Well, I mean, it's the two energies. Everything's head and heart and instinct and, and preparedness or whatever structure. Yeah. And you need both energies. You need it in your life too. Yeah. I showed up here at two o'clock. I love that. You know what I mean? After doing, who's the guest on your podcast today? Well, I, I'd like to say I'm so present. I can't even remember. Uh, the, it was uh, her, Laura Peak. Okay. Laura Peak is, you heard it here a second, because hopefully you'll hear her on my podcast. One of the great, up and coming comics, so funny. Hmm. And I saw her in, in Montreal. I for the past couple of years, I would host new faces because I just wanted to. Oh, that's cool. First of all, I didn't feel like the hosts. Not throwing any shade, but I didn't think the hosts were really trying to kill and trying to make it like a Was hospitable it environment. Dom Herrera for years. It might have been Dom. I don't know. I don't know who hosted mine. So I wasn't trying to repair anyone in particular. And Alonzo Bowden does it. He does a great job. I'd like to go back and do new faces. That's you should. I think it's time. To be one of the new faces? Yeah. You'd just be a face, baby. I'd just be, no, I want to be a new face. Well, well you, why? Okay. You it, could host it because I wanted to fucking snap that crowd yeah. out of it. Like, this is their break, dipshits. Right. And I would say that. I was yeah. like, you fucking think it's a little, I'd almost do warm up. Like, you think it's a little funny fucking laugh. This is their life. Right. It's not time to judge and withhold yeah. each shit. It was funny. <laughs> and then it would be a better show because of that. The problem was you do all of your material and then you go do your hour and everyone's heard it and you're like, yeah. oh shit. So I'm, I'm not going to do it this year, but. So when you do crashing and you're casting or writing, do you write, then find a comic or are you like, oh, there's uh, Bill Burr. Let's write something for Bill. We wrote it. We had them in mind. I think we'd check their availability and then would write the episode. I don't know if this is interesting. I rewrote the pilot, I think six times for different comics because nobody was locked in, but that process really helped me understand the tone of the show. To this day, when I'm trying to sell a show, I'll write a couple episodes of it, because sometimes the second episode makes you figure out something yeah. that you should know. How did Artie Lane come to be on that show? It's actually, I think it's a great story. I wrote the pilot. Um, there was an Amy Schumer version of the pilot. There was a Hannibal Burris version of the pilot. Um, all these different ones. I can't remember all the ones. And then we were just doing the audition for like, un, it was like an unnamed comic. And I think it was maybe Keith Robinson. I'm trying to remember who else was there. It's hard to remember because Artie comes in like a bull in a china shop, like a runaway piano. He's wearing sunglasses. And this, it's hard to riff on Artie because he, he might have been using, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. At that time, yeah. I believe he's clean now. So it's not just a wacky guy, but he did come in as like just a tornado. 
he had his sides unstapled. He couldn't keep them in order. Mm. But everything he said was so funny. Exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. He sweet home Chicago did. So everybody, God love him. We liked it, was doing the scene and Artie was just going off. Yeah. And Judd, I'm not saying this lightly, in his wisdom. And I would say this if Artie was here, I wasn't so sure. I was like, this is a crazy move. <laughs> like a, a big move yeah. to make because the whole idea was my character this guy who grew up evangelical and sweet his wife leaves him all that's real mm -hmm. I get thrown into comedy into the deep end of comedy because she leaves me and then I was like I want to tell the story about how comedy can be so supportive and beautiful which in my experience it can be don't get me wrong there's sharks and pirates and all sorts of stuff but there's also this underlying care Jim Gaffigan, Bill Burr. These are just some of the people that when I was starting out, like gave me the goods. They mm. gave me the encouragement. They gave me the advice. They told me where to go. Gaffigan told me, be undeniable. I wrote it in my notebook. I was like, that's always been my North Star. He's like, be so funny. They can't ignore you, that sort of stuff. Bill had a, other great advice. That's another conversation. But so I wanted that character to be like that, right. like an Obi-Wan like a sage that's like, I know you're in the shit, but let me show you how to do this. Hmm. And then we made it Artie and Artie was like, was that, but he was also like this mixed bag. If you watch his monologue in the pilot of crashing, which got applause, got this, he shot a whole reel of film. There's 15 minutes, whole reel shot out him just talking hmm. all of it. None of it scripted. Judd just said, Judd directed it. He just goes, Artie, just tell them, just tell Pete what you would tell a comic starting out. And we rolled cross coverage, which means there was a camera on me as well. And he just went. And because it was already, it was like, we called it the ghost of comedy future. Uh -huh. He was like, this isn't all fun. It was the opposite. He was like, look out. I had mad TV money. I'd go in the back alley, buy $3,000 worth of cocaine. Next thing I know, I'm in a chicken costume. You know, funny stuff, yeah. but tragic. Right. And here's this sweet guy going like, I'm not so sure about this. But that gave the show this completely different engine it was murky and strange and surprising mm. not just everything's going to be okay and you always have to wonder how much more Artie could have been without the substance abuse and i'm not saying he wasn't a lot he was yeah. great him yeah. on stern some of the best years of stern yeah. as far as i'm concerned but you have to think that concerned like, no like concerned? what 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 did his use his drug use you well know, you know i'm not trying to be funny Here's you, right? So in the pilot of Crashing, Artie is like, I'm, my dad fell off a roof. By the way, he's open about all this. I'm not talking out of school. My right, dad, right. He's like, Talk I, about on Stern. He's like, I'm, my dad fell off a roof and died in my house in a bed. Funny. He's like, congratulations. You're now my wife left me. Funny. Richard Pryor was, I was raised in a, in a brothel in Peoria, Illinois. Funny. He's like, you're, so when I think about you, for example, and your neuroses, for example, like I'm like, why are you reading comments? And part of me, <laughs> part of me is joking, yeah, because I know that the imperfect shit you're shoveling in your furnace keeps the orny boat going. And I really like the orny boat, and I really like the the arty boat. We really you keep in touch with arty. You can't keep in yeah. touch with arty. Changes his number too much. That's it. Yeah, I'm texting some guy named Vern in Vermont. Yeah. Vermont. What are you touring a lot? Because I, I looked at your schedule. Pete Holmes, I go to I go to your website and it says April twelfth and thirteenth, you're at Diana Beach. You're at the uh, uh Dania Beach. I, I just call it the, the improv, Miami Improv. Then you're at the Wilshire Bell Theater, May fourth. That must be Netflix is a joke. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah it is good big. for you. That's the one I'm promoting because I'm like, don't make me the show yeah. that no, no one comes to. I have a I have a uh, in fact I think is that a Saturday? I don't know. I, I, May 4th or 5th, I'm doing, there's a new comedy club called K Kabuchia or something, or Kabu, it's uh, right here on where the uh, Chinese Man Theater is. Okay. And it's a, uh, it's a new. So you're doing it around that time? Yeah. For, as part of the Netflix is a joke special. We're going to, once we get a budget, we'll, uh, you just have to tighten it. Must have, no, the other side, the other, Pete's mic is just, you know, he played with it too much. I, I didn't did. want to say anything, but I was like, lay off the mic. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing, I like. I think it's so funny because, like Chicago, yeah, I'm getting to that. Sold out. Is it? Added. They there. keep. Uh, this is the Den Theater in Chicago. Emailed me favorite, today. Favorite club. Okay, they have been trying to get me in it's there incredible. for several years. Go do it. 
I can't because I do the Chicago Improv and I sell that out every January uh, and it's a conflict. And I ask them, but I want to do it. I want to do all venues like that. Yeah. That I want to do that. They made the Den Theater in Chicago to be a theater space. So the sound and the lights are immaculate. That's what I want. It's it's incredible. It's heaven. Oh. It's so anyway, heaven. I'm doing, it's Kabuchi. I don't know what it's called. Kabuki. Kabuki. It's a, it's a name of a bird. Kabinia, Kadunia. Benihana. It's, yeah. It, uh, it's uh, Katie Kazara. Do you know her? Uh. It's I hope I'm saying her last name correctly. She's opening up the club with her husband, uh, who he wrote the song, All I Want for Christmas is You. From oh. Mariah Carey. Mm. So I hope we have all I want for you. Uh, all I want for Christmas is you. Money behind the sound and lights. There you go. You know, that's what I'm looking for. But so I'm doing the Netflix is a joke special because they said we want Orny in our club at that time. So I'm like, I don't, I'm not really part of the, I'm part of the Netflix is a joke special, but it's not like Netflix gave me a show. What's the like difference? You, oh, it's a big difference. I'm, I'm, I'm. See again, I'd like to fix that perception, but it no. wouldn't. You wouldn't be as funny. No, I don't want so to hold fix on that. To the resentment. I don't want to fix that. I like it. I, I just. I really uh, do. Yeah. It's making you work. You're a gift. Do you know what I do all day, Pete? Yeah. I mean, you have a kid and a wife, and you have all those sort of distractions taking away from you being the greatest comedian you could ever be. I. Oh my I god. I am editing videos. I'll edit this. I hope so. And, <laughs> I'm and just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding. It'll be on you chewing your gum, and. uh <laughs> And then I make clips. So like I just put up a clip today, dying to look at the numbers, where this woman, you know, like the end of the show, I'm on stage, I'm at 60 minutes, right? You are the exposed comedian. I'm, what Seinfeld said about you? Uh, the clear bodied guy in the yeah. biology class. You are, you're so transparent. It's, it's really fun. Yeah. I'm dying to see how it did. It's uh, it's done nothing for my career. And you also go, I'm, put, I'm doing clips. Orny, we're all doing clips. Are you doing clips? You're editing your own clips. I don't edit my own clips. I'm editing my own clips. I'm doing the subtitles. I'm doing all the cuts. I'm importing it into my computer. I'm playing with the sound. I do everything. Took The one I put up today took two days of five hours each day to do. I'd love to see you hire a professional and spend that time sitting on a bench at Santa Monica Pier and maybe meeting the love of your life. Okay, well, you know, who says I haven't already met the love of my life? The look very, in your eyes. I'm very private. So, <laughs> the look in your eyes. <laughs> so the fact that I have 10 hours to edit a, a video for TikTok and I'm an adult... I'm over the age of 50 Thank and I'm you. spending that much time editing. That's a video what I, if I was super funny, that's what I would have said. The fact that you had 10 hours edited, yeah. that makes me know you don't have somebody that's really revving it. So, you know, when you're at the end of the show and you're sort of like, Hey, you know, you're, you're going to, I'm going into the closing hunk. I just want to thank everybody at Sarasota, Florida, McCurdy's comedy club. I'm there every year, sold out in advance this year, added a show. Okay. Uh, I want to thank them because of you guys. This is possible. And I'll be back next year. And uh, after the show, I'll be back there if you guys want to say hi. And and uh, I have merchandise. I sell pillowcases. I look over and a girl's pulling out a cigarette. Are you going to smoke a cigarette what, right you, now, what are you doing? You're not going to smoke a cigarette. And she oh, said, well, well, you took a break. Yeah, but I, don't think I go, what? She goes, yeah, you I, I didn't take a break. No, you know, I'm doing a, the accolades, the thank you to the club, to the people. And so I edited this video of her. She kept saying, no, you took a break. You weren't doing con. I go, so you're going to smoke a cigarette? And we get into I, I said, listen. I said, first of all, I've been up here 65 minutes. You can see the clock at 65 minutes. I haven't taken a breath. You know my act is like, you know, I don't take a breath. I stopped to thank the people. She's dialing out. She's gone. I said, first of all, the I tickets. You can smoke in the club? No, I don't know what she was. Florida, they can do whatever they want. You know, just, so... I, I said, my tickets are $30. I said, they should be $75. you are getting a deal. You know, they're all applauding. But this is this is my life. This is what I do. I, I edit these uh, these clips and I put them up. And, and then you relive the clips too. So you should make a clip of you explaining the clip. I, I'm thinking of doing that, sort of the director's cut, the DVD <laughs> extra. Are you old enough to remember DVDs? Of course. Yeah? Yes. I'm 44. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, tell, just tell me more about that because... Why aren't you, are you touring nonstop? No. Why not? Because uh, I tour once a month. But you should be capitalizing right now on this moment of everybody loves rain. What was the name of the special? Everybody hates, loves everybody I am loves not for rain. everybody. What, what does that mean? You're not for everybody. I, I thought it was a very good title. Self-deprecating? 
Well, it's one of the jokes. Thanks for not watching it. Um, no, no, I understand. You go to parties and you just leave the party. And yes, not for everybody. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. So when I get quizzed on my podcast, I pass. <laughs> Pete Holmes was my guest. Pete Holmes. A plus. Yeah. A plus. Um, I thought, and uh, Netflix, my friend Joanne over there said it was a great title, so I thought that was nice because uh, you know you see these titles and I just don't know what we're talking about, and I see the title I am not for everybody, and I'm like. It, I think, from a marketing perspective, yeah. it makes you wonder. I wonder if he's for me. Am okay. I in the group? Interesting. It's a hook. It's it's but itchy. You are accessible. Like you're not. No, I know. That's kind of the joke. And and a lot of people that love me are like, but you are for everybody. Like you're very approachable. Yeah, you're, you're very insular. Like the the people you're friends with. You had this show where you employed other comedians. Yeah. You know, I look at your guests uh, and your podcast. You know, you even you you almost had Todd Barry on. Yeah. I mean, his flight got canceled. <laughs> congratulations. So do congratulations. Do dodged a very calm wow. bullet. So you get credit for that favor. But I do want to tell you, because I think you'll probably disagree, which will make you very funny, is I feel very strongly one of the ways that I keep my magic, because we're talking about magic, yeah. your Montreal set and all that sort of stuff, how I keep the rock wet, to go back to my previous thing, mm-hmm. Is to not do stand up too much. Is that and to not confuse time off with not working, because gotta do it every night. Yeah, do it. Just let gotta me keep finish. Doing it. No, let this me is finish. wrong. Okay, yeah. Who's to say I'm not working on my act right now? Of course I am. Mm-hmm. Who's who's to say I'm not working on my? And I don't mean consciously. I mean there's something to be said about downtime. And then when I'm so I perform about twice a week mm-hmm. in the city, and then I go on the road once a month. And then it stays fresh, interesting, raw, engaging, fun, silly, playful, light, dragging it out and punishing myself and turning it into something that I have to grind. I'm like, there's a Tony Robbins thing where he's like, don't confuse movement for result. Mm -hmm. The result I want is to be the funniest comic I can be. I can measure that, by the way. How am I doing? Am I improving? And the answer is, yeah. This hour is better than that last hour. So I'm on target. Movement is performing every night, grinding it out, doing three, four sets a night. I go to the store, I do the main room. They're like, do you want to do the other rooms? I'm like, no. What is this, a job? Right. Eat shit. Not to, not to Emily. I, I love the offer. I'm very yeah. polite. But in my heart, I'm like, that's my version of going. I'm not going to come by with my wardrobe. I'm not going to grind this. Yeah. I go up. I go for broke. That's the set. There is something fun to not being at these places that it's often. Special. Yeah. And I love it and I look forward yeah. to it. And one of the things I'm not crazy about with comedy, like Chicago, I'll, Thursday to Friday to Saturday, I'll do five shows. So it's hard to maintain. I have to do a lot of work mm-hmm. to like stay in a state where I feel grateful, engaged, present, silly. Yeah, let me explain that to the listener. So what happens is you show up the first night and it all feels fresh. You feel like the staff is seeing it for the first time. You feel like you're saying it for the first time. It's all working. And then the next night, it atrophies a little bit. But what you're doing is now you're comparing it to the last one. That's why one of the, my goals for this year is to start doing more theaters, not just for the ego of it, but because it'll be better. I'd rather do 90 minutes once than five hours I over, agree. over three nights. I agree. It's better for everybody. Mm-hmm. It's like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. It's better for the customer. Yeah. It is. So that's one of my goals because to me, there, there's a couple things. I like doing five shows because I can talk out of the other side of my mouth and be like, you got to get reps. I'm a, I'm about it. Mm-hmm. And the second show Saturday in that Chicago will be fucking tight. It'll be amazing. I'm not, and Thursday probably be a little bit looser and it might yeah. be my favorite show. Right. But Saturday will be like, Jesus Christ, this guy's, completely embodied yeah. one of the roles of my life which is the comedian yeah and he'll be the only one there mm-hmm. thursday you'll be getting more of my different personas more aspects of myself yeah. but i don't want to dry out the rock so i'm very i really i think everybody needs to figure out what works for them and what works for me is to have a lot of time where i'm living a life where i'm having quiet time mm-hmm. nights off I, I never want to be like, I got a set. I can't. I got a set. Yeah. I'm having dinners with my friends. I'm having time with my kids. I'm taking her to Taekwondo. Kids, plural? No, just my kid. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but the kids plural. in the community, yeah. I, I feel like a, da- nice. a surrogate dad to the, all these nice. kids. How did you end up in Ojai? 
We, uh, you're, you're a generous question. Thanks for asking. I, um, it just felt nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not a lot of people just get like a, hey, why? You know what I mean? Or when we were little, we'd be on the toilet just dreaming that somebody might ask us something about <laughs> ourselves. It felt nice. We ended up in Ojai because during the lockdown, we were, our street in LA sort of turned into a shanty town. It, it's a mental oh, health yeah. thing. But it was really getting pretty nutty. Yeah. A lot of tents, a lot of like, my wife didn't feel safe. The street light went out. It was just kind of not feeling great. We were walking my daughter, who was about 18 months at the time, down the street, and this this unhoused person who looked like Tom Petty, but like crazy grizzled Tom Petty, like kind of approached her and like mm. I was holding her, but he yeah. like read her t-shirt. And both Val and That's I why have, kids shouldn't have graphic t-shirts. I've said this for years. That is really funny. Yeah. No, I, I used to do a bit about it. That's really the, funny. You know, I saw, I saw a kid on the ground once, said live in the dream, and she was on the ground like having a tantrum. You know, very funny. Yeah, very uh, good. I have a whole bunch of. I, I'd have to remember, but yes, go ahead. Sorry. But Ohio had always been a place that we had gone for, you know, a weekend or like some retreat or something. We always loved it, and we that day Val and I were like, "There's that great line in Arrested Development where they go, I don't know why, but that's it." Yeah, we we're like, I don't know why, but that's but it. But why Ohio? I love it. That's great. All it's right. mountains. It, it looks like the Shire. If anybody if you haven't been to Ohio, it looks like. Tolkien's The Shire. Yeah. My wife is very hobbity. Uh, and I, so like, here's a way to answer your question. I do the improv. I'm off stage probably around 9, 9.30. And people are always like, you're going back tonight? And I'm like, okay, well, when I lived in LA, I'd drive home 35, 40 minutes. Now I'm doubling that. But when I get home, I'm going to get out of the car. It's going to be whisper quiet. It's going to be cobblestones and creeks bubbling and birds. Mm -hmm. Not birds, it's nighttime. But I'm going to look up at the sky. Owls. I'm going to see owls. I'm going to see every star. Mm -hmm. I'm going to see the moon. I'm going to see clouds. I'm going to stand silently looking at that. And there's just something mm. about being in nature and being in a beautiful place. Yeah. It's, it's bikes on the lawn. It's perfect for kids. Like, there are a lot of places like this in the world. And we were just like, that's, that's a priority that's great. for us. What I drives you nuts? I mean, I'll tell you, because this podcast is called What's Wrong with Orny Adams. So I'll give you I'll give you two things that happened this week. Sure. All right. So one, I was at the farmer's market yesterday. Yeah. And they have the, they have seating. And I sat at a table. I was waiting for somebody else. Uh, she was coming back with some food. And there were the love three, of your life. Th yeah, three other chairs, right? And the table next to me opens up. The people leave. And three girls sit down. There's only two chairs at that one. And one of the girls doesn't even look at me, doesn't even ask me, do you need this chair? She just assumes I'm such a loser. How could I even have friends? I'm so grotesque. She took a chair away away, and just sat in it. And I almost said, hey, I need that. I've got, I've got three other friends showing up. Just it's a message. Just to Larry David the moment. Yeah. Because it was like, I was so incensed that she thought I was such a loser. There's no possible way this guy could have three more people joining him. Yeah. Like, am I wrong to feel that? Yeah. No, I'm not. Yes. Would you have said so? I should have said something. I should have had the courage to make it really awkward. Or as your podcast is called, make it weird. Very weird. Again, going back to my original statement, I wouldn't change you for the world. The world needs you and you're a gift. And you're drinking poison, hoping, hoping that it'll hurt her. Okay. Who, who suffered the most? Give me what. Who suffered the most? I was suffering, exchange? but once once the, the girl came back, I go see. I I'm not I'm not alone. I'm not the the loser in high school eating lunch alone like I used to. What? So, what? Well, yeah, there. If it's hysterical, it's historical, right? So yeah, that's what you're, they say. You're yeah. in you're in your high school and you're a loser, right? So, uh, but uh, I'll play the game. I'm not going to try okay. to fix you. Okay. What else? So, What's the things that drive me nuts? I'll give you. I'm a big sound person. Yeah. Um, a very sensitive person. And it goes back to uh, the experience of having parents that fought a lot. So sound was like unsafe. Okay. And then you close the door, you still hear it fucking rough, uh, you know, for me. So I can't stand sound and I do what you're doing, which is I, I layer all this meaning that may or may not be true onto it, but it's very real for me. So it's a hysterical, historical mm -hmm. response. So like my wife and I on our honeymoon, we went to Bora Bora really beautiful, a real yeah. splurge trip. And it's just what you're picturing. It's like this awkward- Which I'd give you as a gift. For what? Your, your, My wedding? Yeah, your wedding. No gifts. 
No gifts at my wedding. Judd didn't give anything. No gifts. He didn't think I should still give a gift, even though it says no gift. It said no gifts. He had already given me the greatest gift. What's he going to do? Change my life I, again? Yeah, I mean, something. We something were... for Bora, maybe a dinner at Bora Bora. Uh, it just seems... I don't know, man. Okay. I, I'll say Judd's paid for every dinner I've ever had with him. That's okay. Nice. I mean, that's that's diplomatic, but a gift would have been nice. <laughs> that's all. I'm just saying, you know, uh, you know, it's like when somebody should give you a gift and you just get the holiday card in the mail with the family in yeah. the outfit. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't Rub, need that. Rubbing it in. Yeah. I'm telling you what make, drives me crazy. Go stop, ahead. Go ahead. Look at my tour dates. Yeah. So we're in Bora Bora. It's like turquoise, that perfect serene lagoon water right. that yeah. feeds into the ocean. One of the most beautiful places in the world. You're in those hotel rooms that are these freestanding huts with stilts. You jump right out of your yeah, room. Yeah, I've seen the, the pictures. I'm just painting a picture. It's important. It's also dead quiet. So that's the thing that I love the most about it, telling you that sound is my trauma. Yes. You just listen to the sound of the ocean, your birds. Mm -hmm. You might hear something faint in the distance, like the sound of the dinner or you know, at the right. resort. It's beautiful, though. And then the the this is such a high class problem, but it's a good example, I think. The guy in the hut next to us goes out on his porch or whatever you call it, dock. He's on his dock. He brings out a Bluetooth speaker and starts playing music. Wow. I'll fucking Whoa. go nuts. Oh, I'd like to see this. Inside. Oh. I might call the front desk. I'm not gonna confront the person. Right. But I'll tell you, my inner Orny, and it's one of the reasons I yeah. love you. Yeah. It's called well, the, an inner Orny now? In my inner Orny. Yeah. The great gift of comics, I think, is they're in a high status position. They're on stage. They're under lights. They're loud. They're 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 the leader of the group. Mm -hmm. Pac mentality. You're the leader. And one of the things you do and one of the things I like to do is you unashamedly display some of these feelings. And, and you're kind of unconsciously saying like, and it's okay. And that's a gift to the crowd. Well, I've accepted it. At some point, you just have to accept who you are. And they're projecting their weird inner orny onto you and they're forgiving themselves. I don't mean to over-philosophize it here, but I think that's a real gift. Well, don't you think more people have been in that situation where yes. somebody's pulled a chair and hasn't even yes. given the respect that's why I don't, of, hey, that, do you need this? That's why I'm not going to walk you through some of the steps that I would walk through to make that less painful for you. But that's, fine. that's, that's another topic. In this situation, when I say I'm upset, I don't mean I'm upset in my head i mean a black cloud of tingling rage dread sadness um disempowerment victimhood whatever it just it erupts in me my wife my beautiful wife knows this is happening mm. and in my mind i am doing everything to this person from swimming oh. over there throwing the speaker in the speaker the one that i always want to do revenge fantasy the, the, the ultimate revenge fantasy because i don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But what I do really want to do is go in the room, get a Bluetooth speaker, put it on my porch and play something louder. Like my special? Like your... <laughs> the, the, the thing is, I want them to go, don't you see? Uh, yes. And this is my, this is so much of my life is driven right. by this. Don't you see you're not being considerate? Yeah. I can't stand. I don't think they care. I don't think people care anymore. But that, well, that's the work. I don't actually think. But what's with this work? What's with all this guru self help? I didn't say guru what bullshit. This. What I'm saying is, what I'm doing and adding. This man is playing music. Yes. Anything good? I don't know what it was. Okay. Because I can't hear it. I'm. It's like a movie. It's like. Yeah. Okay. Like I can't even hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so upset. Are you violent? Do you get violent? I don't get violent. Okay. And I don't take it out on people. I. Mm. That, that could be bad or good. I I, 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 I could see a therapist being like, let it out, let it out. I do let it out with Val. She's a safe space for me to let out all my yeah. feeling. What am I, not safe? No, am what? I an unsafe space? What do you mean? You want to hear it now? No, I don't now because we got to we got to wrap it up. We got to get you out of here. Gotta wrap it up. Traffic to OI. This is this is like if, if listen if we were on stage right now, there'd be people around us lighting cigarettes, going, "What's with this break?" But <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible burn. Yeah. So, no, 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 I'm just, go ahead. No, I don't even know. I'm so hurt by your burn. What are you talking about? I'm talking about us. Just oh, I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, this is me. It's my but podcast. I'm responsible. I want for this failure. Oh, fa no, 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 no. I don't actually feel it, I think what I'm saying bad? is very, no, 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 okay, no. Because I'll zero. feel bad for like three days. If, I'll write you a check. If you, no, I'll money, write you, money not for money. This. Oh, good. For, good for one hug. Just make a donation to uh, St. Jude's. St. Jude's. Okay. What it is is, I don't like when people don't consider it, but the, the, the part that helps is I go, he's playing music. 
I'm adding to that he doesn't care about me. And when I was a kid, I learned if I was being ignored, I wasn't safe. That's where I developed my personality. It's like, look at me, look at me, look at me, make me exist, make me safe. So I actually feel physically threatened by this person. Yeah. I feel like uh, existentially unsafe by that. So weird. So the work is to accept that and to tell yourself what's actually happening. Could, and, and then you can call down to the front desk. And they, I did, and he turned his music off. Couldn't it be that you're on the spectrum and that yeah, music for sure. bothers you differently? It, it could be. Yeah, it could be a, a whole bevy of things and we may never understand them. But my wife would say, you know, you put your hand on your chest, you acknowledge what's happening, you tell yourself it's okay. Okay. Your heart beating more or is it? Oh uh... yeah. It's it's as close as I get to a, a panic, panic attack. attack yeah. yeah. I wouldn't say it's a panic attack. It's more like a, it's like a, I leave reality. I, I think the problem for me is intellectually, I know. What would you do? Exactly what you did. I don't confront people when I'm not on stage. So I would have called the front desk. Yeah. Or if and I- By the way, that's what a nice resort is. Yeah. That's what a film set is, by the way. I loved making Crashing because somebody would be playing loud music. You tell the AD. Yeah. They go and tell, they give them money to turn. I was right. like, this is my heaven. Yeah. It, it says in the script, it's a quiet room. Make it quiet. Right. It's beautiful. You know, it's, there's nothing worse than a green room where the other people, I sit there. First of all, I'm the headliner. Everybody there, it's sold out because I've done something right. Okay, people are lined up afterwards buying merch. Okay, because I've done something right. I sit in the green room with all my notes out, and I use local support because I just I don't feel like flying people in and paying for them. And then you've got to babysit them. They they you know they 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 mess around with a waitress. Now I have to answer to it. Do you know what I mean? So, but I'm sitting there with all my notes, and everybody else, it's like a social hour. Yeah. They're drinking. They're talking. Okay. okay, so I'm with Bill Burr in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'll never forget it. I, I think I was opening for him. Big church theater. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I think yeah, you'll yeah. like it. We're back there. His agents are back there. It's what you're saying. It's a social hour. And Bill's just like, okay, I need the room. Everybody out. And everybody left. And he was just like, I just can't. I can't handle it. Yeah. And I was like, thank you for modeling that for me. And now I do that. And I feel, I could be wrong, that a lot of the times these opening acts are trying to impress me with their conversation. Buddy, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and give you advice. <laughs> this is this is You're my this, senior, you're I, really you know what I mean, you've been doing this longer than me. Yeah. You're you're fantastic. This is elder abuse. Bring <laughs> <laughs> Bring an opener. No. I bring my opener. Yeah. I, no. Matt McCarthy. I, no, I'm going to steal him from you. He's you he, please do. He could I don't I tour once a month as we've covered. Yeah. He'd love to go yeah. out more. Matt is a saint. He's a partner. He's my. He's a dear, dear. I was going to say he's my best friend, but I was just talking about how Mike Barbelli is my best friend. Yeah. But anyway, he's and one of my Judd best friends. And Artie, and Artie Lang, and Conan O'Brien. Was on your podcast, and Judd today. Apatow, yeah, yeah, and uh, Laura Peak. Yeah, Laura Peak. But um, when, look, I, I, I'm just joining you. I don't want to be too negative. But when Matt and I are in the green room, sometimes the club will forget or not be informed that it's a two person show. That's important to me. Uh -huh. And there'll be an opener. And I feel all of that onus to like, make sure they're cool. And now I'm not thinking about my act. I'm kind of yeah. trying to chat with them and incorporate them and all that sort of stuff. And it might become a little bit more social. Maybe they're drinking. The smell of that isn't my favorite thing to smell, you yeah. know, in the green room, all that sort of stuff. So what can you control if you bring an opener, someone you like, a steady Eddie, who's not going to hit on the waitress, who's not going to be a disgrace. It's one of the great- It's hard to find. It's hard to find because what happens is after a uh, few it? months, they feel like they should be headlining. Is, is that yeah. true? Yeah. Is that true? I do feel that, yeah. Is that true? Yeah. I, again, I don't you know, think you that's always very true. different. We're very different. And we have very, like even this happened to me. We're Lithuanians from Lexington, Massachusetts. We are. What many, more, and we're comedians. What Lexington more do you want? It's a Lithuanian town. I didn't realize it. What Boston. part of Lexington were you in? Were you near? Were you near? Do you remember? Well, it's on Bloomfield Street, which goes right down to Mass Ave. And you take a left and you're in the center, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Near Merriam Hill. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And those apartments. Okay. They're, they're the apartment building on the right. Huh. I still dream about it. So this happened to me. This could only happen to me. When, when you say, oh, this could only happen to Orny. I, I'm in, I'm at the comedy store. I'm in the main room and there's multiple comedians. And let me tell you something. These shows at the comedy store, it's, it's you know, home run after home run after home run after. Are you swallowing that gum? No, I'm adding another piece. Okay. What are we up to now? Because I feel like there was two or three when we started. 
You've added two cents, so now we're up to like five. Yeah. We're going to close with a bubble? You're very talented. It's nicotine gum. Oh, it is. Yeah. I'm oh. not just hubba bubba. Well, let me see the wad. Show me. What are we up to? I don't know, right? So does this calm you down? Does this? It helps you focus. Yeah. yeah. It's going to play some Bluetooth music in a minute. Chew tooth. Chew tooth. <laughs> um, so I'm sitting there with my notes and, you know, just going like this over my notes. And the comics are having their discussions and stuff like that. Uh, people coming in and going, but I'm just looking at my notes. You know, I don't feel very comfortable at the store. That's not my that's not my place. Could you just lose at the store? What do you mean lose? I'm just not comfortable. No, no, no. I'm comfortable at plenty of other places. But the store isn't where. I'm not, you know. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with my notes, and all of a sudden this comic pops up and he walks, gets right in my face, goes, Hey man, what's your problem? What's your problem? Man, what do you do? Like, seriously, what's wrong with you? And I, I'm like, what do you, I don't, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I thought this could only, and there was somebody there that's really close that I'm really good friends with. And that person came, this is, that, it's so bizarre. Like I watched the whole thing. You're just sitting there. You're not being condescending. In fact, when somebody said something funny, like a comic, you would actually, you know, laugh and join in. I wasn't being aloof, but it's very strange. He just meant you're not engaging with the green room. And well, what was his tone? He wasn't joking. Well, I'll tell you off the air who it is and it'll make sense to you. But Ari Shafir? I haven't seen him in years. Yeah, I don't think he's around LA as yeah. much. Yeah. Who this was is, it? I'll you tell you off the me. air. This is what, what's so bad about a guy who yelled, What's wrong with you? I want to know if it was a bit. That sounds like a bit. It's it's like this. What are you doing? You're doing your notes. You're making us look bad. No, this person was serious and uh it was almost like an affront that I wasn't giving him the attention. Mark Marin said that? No, I don't think Mark would do it. 10, 20 years ago, Mark would do that. I'm just guessing. You know, Mark had me on his podcast. I know. And really um, did me a, a, a solid. Yeah. Was very, you no, know. I know, I listened to it. Yeah. That I think I, that's when I had you on mine. No, you had me in 2014. Mark had me about a, uh, two years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot, you of, said, a lot uh, of people have me on at the height of their podcast. Not, you know, I build it and then they just use it to get Laura Peak. It's you're very it's, you're very good. You're very good. Here's what's I uh, will close on this. Pete Holmes is my guest. Part of the Netflix is a joke festival. And, and, Invited and, by Netflix. Yeah, I mean legit booked by Netflix. Not like an ancillary sort of like, hey clubs, you can pick one person you think is funny. And, and I would have thought every club would have made me an offer. Uh isn't that a gift too? Where is your special on Netflix now? Is it on the front page still? Is it buried? Did they bury it yet? I'm gonna call. Hold on, I'm gonna call Dave Rapp. If this is, where's my shoe? I don't. Hello? I don't know how it's doing. I mean, that's that's the thing. So uh, I would like to say, please watch it. I'm Everybody very, should watch I'm it. I'm very proud of it. Everybody should see Pete when he leaves his house once a month. You should go see Pete Holmes wherever he is. Uh, according to me, between now and May, he's got three dates. <laughs> Let me do the math. Let's see. March, April. That's right. Once a month. Once a month. It makes, it makes perfect sense. 12 a year. Here's what I discovered. I'm special. You're great. I'm, I'm, what is it called? Like with uh, diamonds? You uh, yeah, diamond control hands. the market. Yeah, diamond hands. You don't sell. I don't sell. That means don't sell. Oh, I don't diamond mean in the stock hands. market. I mean like diamonds aren't actually rare. They just control how That's many absolutely. Of them are in the market. It's bears. I can give you the history. I know all about it, but there's more than enough diamonds and they can manufacture them now, uh, you know, in a lab. Same with me. I'm here every second of the day, but I, it's controlled scarcity. So I'm only out once a month. I love it. That is special. I feel we're bonded for life by that phone call you made to me after the improv. That's all it takes. Yeah. Isn't very that crazy? Generous. You're very generous. I really do think your special is top tier. I'm going to listen to the rest of it on the way home. I ex I it's unbelievable. Review. I um, mean, maybe I will. This is what I, I discovered so this nice. week when I was going under my sink to get some paper towels. And I realized the half paper towel is genius. It yeah. is so beautiful, but it's, it is the antithesis of what business should be. I don't get the decision. Okay, so it's the opposite of two ply. Two ply made sense and three ply because now they're going to give us extra tissue and charge us m more per square inch of tissue. I think I have the answer. But to give us half and in bounty, 
one of them has quarter towels. What's the what's the answer? Why I, they? I think I have the answer. I'm yeah. not positive, but it's uh, if it's a half, you end up using it more often, and then you actually end up using net more paper towels. That it has to be. They had to have studied this. I'm sure they did. Here's the thing. I think I go, I go three, so I end up doing one and a half. Yeah, you're doing more. Instead of, it has to be. They had to. Because now you're in an abundance mindset. It's only half. Do you know that paper towels, the Scott brothers in 1879 in Philadelphia began manufacturing. I believe it was 1876, but go on. It's 1879 according to their website. Oh, okay. And by the way, the Scott brothers sit around editing videos of themselves every single day, neglecting their, their personal life. It used to have a thousand sheets for ten cents a roll. Now we, if we get hundred and forty, which they call a triple roll or the boomer roll, whatever it is, the jumbo shrimp roll, you, maybe you get hundred and forty sheets. That's shrinkflation. There you go. Yeah, I love that, Pete. I, yeah, go ahead. Do you have any questions for me? No, but they were a sponsor of Mike Podcast. They're not anymore, but I still use them. Real paper will deliver them to your house. I like that, and they make bamboo toilet paper. Which and, is great. And what what's that great for? If you have a panda well, stay over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're, bamboo is just a much more. I'm a bad laugh because I just kind of no, swallow it. No, you're really good. You're a guy who gets this. <laughs> you're a guy who listens. Like I'm doing Adam Carolla on well, Thursday. I, yeah, there you let go. Me, let me tell you what I have to do. Take over. Yeah. Guess who won uh, guest of the year? Was it you? I've won every time I do it. I win guests of the year. What did I win this year? I won something, but... Oh, okay. At the Corollas or the whatever. Ace the Ace Awards. Awards. I, uh, I don't want to brag, but I like that I saw it. I was like... Because, you know, it's an interesting thing with Adam, because I know what you're saying. I go in a little bit with a different energy when I do Adam, because I'm right. like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. I'm not going to sit there. I drove here. I'm going to be on the show. Yeah. And that's good. That's your job. Yeah. I, he, he, he prides himself on being a great listener. I had him in here. He did this podcast and I thought it was great because he revealed a side of himself uh. that he normally doesn't. Talked about his children. Yeah. And Adam is actually a friend. People don't, we, we don't see eye to eye on many things. And so it makes for a great podcast. Well, that's the other thing I don't, You'll. I think the Orny and me, you'll appreciate. Like I like to call him on his shit. Me too. Like I remember I did one of his pods and he was like, I don't like when people put things in my garbage. Like dog walkers put a bag of shit in my garbage. And I'm like, what are we doing? What are we talking? He's like, yeah. I gotta smell it when I open. I'm like, who's opening the garbage, taking a whip? It's really fun to be yeah, contrary. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that serves me well. But this is a friendly place. I think we both have ADD, and that makes for good uh, podcast hosts. I think so. Yeah, I think so. When I was on, I'll tell a quick story about Adam. He was he told this story because we were talking about the audience demanding new material, and I have a different philosophy. I think you write a bit. You keep writing it. You keep tightening it and cranking it as tight as you can. You add to it. You crank, you crank, you let it marinate and becomes a great bit. So I don't believe in turning over every year. If I come back to your market, you're going to see some repeat stuff. Uh -huh. Get over it. In fact, in fact, in fact in you're one welcome. Show, yeah. In one show in Sarasota, I did almost all new stuff. And then a lady came up and she said, oh, you're not doing this one anymore? And I go, you can't win. You yeah. can't win. So Adam told this story and you know how he gets so in tent intense in his story he's not listening and he's he said you know i was doing this show and dickie from the boss tones was in the audience in arizona and dickie uh came up to me after the show and he loved the show and dickie's in the green room and i said dickie how long a drive do you have and and, and dickie said oh i might stick around for the second show so now on the second show i'm up there and i'm i'm doing i'm thinking i got to do new material because you know dickie's in the audience and i'm doing new material but it's not working as well as the first show and i said adam i said i gotta stop you there i said how often are you on stage and you're thinking about Dick and it ruins the show? Very, very good. And it just, it's fun to like... You know where I go with that? What? You ever watch two Boston shows? <laughs> Gonna yeah. be a similar set. Right. You know what I mean? Relax. He knows show business. Right. Like you're torturing yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you don't see people going, the Rolling Stones concert going, start me up again. Yeah. <laughs> again. But I play think the, play the new the new stuff is when everyone goes to the bathroom. I think that's generational. I, I, I tell this to myself. I like turning over new hour. The last time I was in Chicago, uh, it was a different hour. So when I'm going back, it'll be a new hour. But if I do do an old bit or a bit that I haven't figured out, cut it from the special, still doing it, I don't feel bad about it. And I think that's the way audiences are these days. That that thing that we're talking about was a bigger issue 
starting out. I don't think it's as much of a thing. Hmm. Like we can we can lighten up. Like I do a monthly Largo show here in L.A. Did I ask you to do no, it? No, I would like to do that. I thought I did ask I you. I did. Uh, I asked you to do it. You weren't available, I thought. No, you didn't. But oh, I, I'd like to. You, yeah, you'd love you've it. Included me in zero of your projects. Oh, really? Zero. Yeah. Is that Grace? I'm sorry. Grace, is that right? Grace? I'm talking to my assistant. Okay, I'm talking to your assistant too. <laughs> in fact, you're sorry, but your dad just texted me. So uh, <laughs> your let me dad deal just with that anxiety. Me. Your dad texted me, how will it feel if it goes badly? I'm like, dad. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I do that and I don't worry about repeating stuff because I'm like, you guys are the real fans. You're yeah. watching it work out. You're watching it come out. What are you, a DJ? No, I'm about to play the theme song and take us out of here. Pete, do you have any, uh, as a, a guy who's done so much. <laughs> Without you. Crashing. Yeah, you've gone real far by not including me. You know, don't you understand that I just, I feel left out? And you don't give a shit? You're just laughing in my face. Pete Holmes, what advice do you have for me? For you? Yeah. If I don't like it, I'm just going to play the theme that Harlan Williams is singing. Oh, really? Yeah. Harlan wrote the theme with his cousin, who's in the Bare Naked Ladies, Kevin Hearn. Fun. Yeah. I, uh, I don't have any advice for you. I, I like Orny just how you are. I really do. Pete Holmes is my guest. Pete Holmes is my guest. There it goes. Dude, thank you. Thank you. You're uh, you're amazing. I just You know, this is the theme. You can almost hear it. Yeah. Thinking of our funny I knew this was going to go well. I didn't know it was going to go this way. <laughs> you're very good. You're very oh, thanks, man. You're generous. Yeah. I appreciate that. You but, are too. We are still rolling, but I'm saying, I'm saying this in all seriousness. Are we rolling? Because I do want to uh, listen to You Made It Weird. We'll have you back on. I'd love to. But please, I'm, I have a goal. I want to double my listenership on You Made It Weird. So please give it a try. I know there's a million podcasts. We can hear this, yes. I know there's a million podcasts. But please give it a try. It's very dear to my heart. I feel like give it a try. you probably have a lot of listeners because there were so many reviews. You've been doing it a long time. Yeah, we've one been of the early adapters. It's just one of the, that's kind of what I'm going against. I'm trying to say the show is revitalized. It's engaged. We're really hitting a great stride. So if you, maybe if you used to listen to it, please come back. You drop an episode every week at a certain every time. Every Wednesday and then Friday is the bonus episode with Val. Give it a shot. I'm going to listen. I would love to have you. I'm going to listen. Pete Holmes, yeah. you made it weird. You're there special. Not for everybody or somebody. I'm not for everybody. I'm not for every, everybody. I'm not screwing it up on purpose. I know. But I I knew this. I, I just appreciate you coming on. It, it means a lot to me. Thank you. You're a gift to the world. Thanks for doing everything you do. You are too, dude. You are too. Enjoy your ride to Oh, hi. Thank you, baby. Yeah, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Pete Holmes. Thank you to Ernesto Rotato for mastering this audio. And thank you to you, the listeners. And I'm not kidding. We we doubled our listenership. That's what Pete wants to do with his podcast. Now, granted, he probably has more listeners, but we did it. We did it because of you. So thank you for sharing, for liking, for writing comments. Thank you to the people that subscribe to my Patreon. And thank you to the people listening on iTunes and Spotify and Google or watching it on YouTube. Wherever you're getting it, I appreciate it. Thank you so much and look forward to seeing you or you seeing me for episode 105.